Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Today we have another program requested from the internet, more specifically from YouTube. Someone was asking about dealing with house sparrows and discouraging house sparrows from their bluebird boxes. Gorgeous shot of a male bluebird sitting on a bluebird box and so many people struggle so mightily to get bluebirds uh, and they finally have them checking out a nest box and there's nothing more frustrating than uh, something running them off, especially uh, house sparrows. And so that's what this, this program is dedicated to today. And we're going to start first by saying if you are going to do this, if you're going uh, to, to, to actively try to discourage those house sparrows from your bluebird box, which you should, uh, remember, house sparrows were introduced into this country, and they're exotic, and they negatively impact native bird populations. And if you're going to rip their nest out and do the things that we're going to talk about in this program, you need to positively identify that bird before you do it, because they're not the only other bird that will use a bluebird nest. Uh, we have lots of cavity nesters, and in, in, in you, wherever you live, you probably have many of the same ones that we do. And if they use them, anybody but that house sparrow, you have to let them use that nest box. So let's go through some of those first. Uh, some of those are extremely common, like the black capped chickadee is a, a very common user of uh, nest boxes, uh, bluebird boxes. As a matter of fact, in the house that I live in, it took me six years, and the, blue, the chickadees used the nest box on many occasions before my bluebirds ever moved in. So uh, this is a chickadee nest with uh, the with the dog hair in it and moss. And chickadee chickadees will use a lot of moss when they build the nest in their box. And um, that's something that you can separate them out from a bluebird nest. But remember, if a if a chickadee is using that box, you have to let the chickadee use the box. You cannot rip a chickadee out of his nest. They're a protected species. Things like House friends are protected species, and they move, may move into your your bluebird box, and they'll use sticks to build their nest. So their 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 nest is made of a lot of sticks. You cannot disturb that nest. You cannot disturb those eggs. If they're nesting in your box, you got to let them finish their nesting cycle before you turn it back over to the bluebirds. Now, any of these ne uh, chickadees, uh, house wrens, Carolina wrens. Um, and tree swallows. There's I got pictures of some of these, not all of them, but there there's the Carolina wren. If he's using your box, you gotta let him finish using it. The tree swallows, if tree swallows use your nest box, you have to let them finish nesting. So before you go on and, and, and try to uh, take measures to discourage or take out the nest that's in that bluebird box, make sure what it is before you do it. The bird that we're talking about today is the house sparrow or the English sparrow. And these birds, this is the male and this is the female, and they are super aggressive and they will absolutely take over your bluebird box given the opportunity. Uh, many of you know about this because you've fought them for a very long time. So what I'm going to do is talk about some of the methods that we have had success with in the past. And believe me, in 35 years, I have seen numerous kinds of bluebird box designs come out that claim that house sparrows will not use them. And every single one of them proved to be wrong. They, you know, we, we got them in, we tried them, they had some that the hole was on the bottom of the amount of the bluebird box, so the holes underneath, and the bluebirds, well, sparrows took to them right away. We have the, the ones with the compressed bottoms in them, the old Peterson design, so it's skinnier at the bottom. Well, the house sparrows don't like those, nested in them right away. Over the, over and over and over again, I've had house people producing bluebird boxes that claim that the sparrows won't use them. And part of that is some people are designing these boxes that live out in in more rural areas um, where there's not as many house sparrows and it may be easier to discourage them. But in urban areas, house sparrows are so prolific that they, it's very hard to, to put up a bluebird box and keep them out of there. The 
the biggest thing and the biggest challenge for them, of course, is they have to they they want that nest site so bad, and they like to build a domed nest. They house sparrows like to build a, an enclosed all around grass nest with a tunnel going down to their bait to the babies, uh, and that that method. And how nest boxes and uh, bluebird boxes are perfect sizes for them to go in. So what are some of the ways that we can discourage those house sparrows from taking of your bluebird box? First and foremost, once you've identified that it's for sure one of these birds that is going in and out of your nest box, and you see a lot of times that male will be sitting up on top of the box, and that's a real clear indication that that's what's going in there. Well, bluebirds make a perfect, beautiful little nest, and their their eggs are blue, and they're they're they cover the bottom of the nest box with, with grass and maybe a little bit thicker than that, but it, it's usually a pretty thin box. House sparrows. When you open a box that's got house sparrows in it, it looks like, as I, the old joke is, Sears blew up. And that is, it is packed full of grass. And the one thing is the bluebirds can't take that grass out of there. So the box is useless to them once those house sparrows are packed it full of grass. And so we recommend, first thing we recommend is not letting those, those house sparrows get established in your box. Rip those nests out. Don't, here's a piece of advice. Don't throw that old nest on the ground because the, you'll want to look out there and they'll be lifting it, all that grass right off the ground where you dropped it right back into the box again. So get rid of that grass once you pull it out of there. And you do that repeatedly. You're probably going to have to do it every day, especially in the spring when they first, first discover your box, but you got to discourage them. Now, some people... They, they get to the point where I just can't do it. I don't have enough time to rip that the nest out every day or multiple times a day when because it, it, they're so fast at, at, at building those nests. They'll prop their doors open. So if your bluebird box has a door opening on it, then you can prop the door up and maybe use, it, use something to keep it open so the bluebirds will not nest in there. I mean, the, the house sparrows don't like it. It's letting in too much light, letting in too much uh, moisture, and so they will stay out of it. They will leave it alone. Um, and then you can maybe run them off for a few days, and once they've left it alone for, I don't know, several days, you can go back and close it, and hopefully the bluebirds will have a chance to move in. Once the bluebirds move into a nest box, a lot of times they can defend it against those house sparrows, but it's just that early establishment of the nest that you really need to help those bluebirds out. Now, something that we've used for years and years, and, uh, and here, we, I, I found this on the internet, oh God, it had to be 18 years ago, a guy had written an article about using fishing line, monofilament fishing line, to discourage house sparrows. And so we, I don't know how, th how you can see, if you can see this very well, on the, but you see my fingers running up and down. This is 10 pound test line, monofilament fishing line. And I have nails up at the top and nails at the bottom, and I have that strung in front of the hole. Now, how I have it aligned is the string is running on right on the outside borders of each uh, of each side of the hole, and I have it at least an inch in front of the hole. This one's a little bit further than an inch on there. And like I said, we've had people who said, "Man, that thing it works like a charm," and, and and it kept house sparrows out of my box for two, three, four, even five years. I've had other people say. They avoided it for a couple of weeks or a month or two, and then they went in it. So, but one thing we know for sure about the fishing line trick is it doesn't work on a house that the house sparrows have already been in. If they've they are, they've nested in that box and you try to add it to the box, they tend not to be afraid of it. But what you're what you're imitating, of course, here is spider webs, and we see it when we first put them up, especially years ago when we were first introduced these boxes. They were. The, the house sparrows would hover right in front of that fishing line and then fly away, and the bluebirds would ignore it. Now, the trick about the, blue, the fishing line, you can't use super heavy fishing line. If you use anything heavier and say, 12-pound test, it's too visible, and it does tend to discourage the bluebirds. So if you're going to use this trick, make sure it's like 10-pound test lines, what I've got on the box right now. And if you're not a fisherman and you're wondering what I'm talking about, just strength it is regular fishing line the clear color fishing line you can get it anywhere you know they uh, and make sure it's a 10 pound test line and this is a trick worth trying uh, and, and if it doesn't work what have you invested in it hardly any you know, a couple of nails and, um, and 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 fishing line is really cheap if it works fantastic if it doesn't just cut the strings off and then you don't have to worry about it and, 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 but you can use it if you want to now another trick 
that we recommended for years, especially in urban areas. Now, and I understand the North American Bluebird Society does no longer endorse this. So uh, for, to, you take this for what it's worth and that we, I know it has been successful. Uh, when I worked at Fort Bragg, uh, North Carolina, I was in charge of about 200 bluebird boxes on post. And I would go check these these boxes and, and regular routes. One day I walked up to a bluebird box um, that the roof was broken on it and it was just hanging off the side. It was barely on the box. And I walked up and I thought, oh, well, I have to repair this. And sure enough, a female bluebird flew out of the box and there were eggs in there. She was using the box even there though there was no roof on the box, basically. So an old trick that, 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 that some will use is to take and cut a large hole. Now, and now remember, this is one of those late, last result things, but cut a large hole in the roof of the box and then cover that with wire, like hardware cloth, something that, so that the sun and the rain can still get in there. And it, 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 the sparrows hate that, whereas the bluebirds, that female bluebird is going to brood her eggs and her babies anyways in the cold weather or the wet weather. She's going to be sitting on there. Now, one thing that's really, really important if you're going to do this is to make sure that in your box you have a nest lift. And a nest lift, I've talked about these before, but this is on the bottom of your box, and it's a wire mesh that, that lifts the nest, keeps it off the bottom of the box. And so if, extra, if you're going to let moisture in your box, you need to keep that nest off the bottom of the box so that it doesn't propagate uh, and, and, and really promote the uh, bugs and stuff reproduction in there. So if you're going to use this method, and make sure you cover it, because if you don't cover it, if it's just an open hole, of course, a raccoon can reach right down in there and get her. Whereas if you put some type of a hardware cloth on top of it, same material basically as that nest lift, you can keep them out of there. So again, that's getting into that last resort. And, and it, if you sometimes, you know, it, and as a biologist, it's better to be part of the solution and not being part of the problem. And if I allow house sparrows to nest in my bluebird boxes, then I feel like I'm propagating the house sparrows, which is doing nothing but hurting the bluebirds even further. So I do, you know, we, we highly recommend if you cannot solve the house sparrow problem, you might just want to take your box down. And like, like I said, because the house sparrows will continue to use it. But if chickadees and Carolina wrens, the things we mentioned first are using it, that's great. We love those birds and we want those to nest in them too. But we just don't want ones that are going to damage. And yes, house sparrows will trample uh, bluebird eggs. They'll go in and break them and then fill the box and, and nest in it. They'll kill their babies. We know they'll do that. So, you know, we're wanting to discourage the the pest species, as we say, the, the ones that are introduced. And I got criticized on YouTube not long ago because I, I said you know, a similar thing about the starlings. And I was accused of, you know, they uh, someone, I, I do know, not everybody has it in their heart to rip out nests and to rip out eggs and things like that. I understand that and I respect that. But if you really are wanting to help your bluebirds, this is video is all about things you can do. Uh, and remember, house sparrows, European starlings, and domestic pigeons are not protected by law. All those other ones are. So you can safely rip those nests out and rip those eggs out. So that, again, the last resort, you don't, you know, I, I don't go around killing birds. That's, that, that's not my thing either. So, but you, you, if you're wanting to improve your bluebird situation to help your bluebirds out, give them a place to nest. These are some of the methods that you can use to help your bluebirds. So that's the idea behind the program. The, you know, if you have any questions, you always, you know, contact, there's a lot of contact information below and you can always send in ideas for future programs. Give us a like, give us a share. If you're on, on YouTube, please subscribe. Until then, next time, let's come by and let's talk birds.